In this video, we're going to solve the triangle ABC given the data that little a equals 314, which is approximately 100 pi, of course, uh, little b, which equals 205 feet, and an angle A is given to us, and its measurement is 35.4 degrees in this situation. So you'll notice that because we know side length A and we know angle A, we have an angle opposite side pair, an AOS. Whenever we have an AOS, it's very suggestive that we should use the law of sines to help us solve uh, this oblique triangle. Uh, notice that we have the AOS for A, and then if we look at the AOS for B, we have the side length B, but we don't have the angle B. So it's very natural that we solve for angle B first. And to do that, we of course will use the law of sines. So we're gonna take sine of B over little b is equal to sine of A over little a. Since we wanna solve for, for, sine, or for angle B, we would clear the denominators times both sides by little b. This tells us that sine of B is equal to B over A sine of A. And then plug in the data that we have, uh, little b, is 205, little a is 314, and then sine of a is equal to 35.4 degrees here. And so we're gonna want to compute this number uh, using, of course, a calculator here. Uh, help us out here to approximate this. Make, and, you know, follow along with me here with your own calculator. Uh, we're gonna, again, just throw this in our calculator. Uh, make sure you are in degree mode at this moment. 205 divided by 314 and times that by sine of 35.4 degrees, you'll get approximately 0 0.3. 782. Now, this is a very important part to, no, to mention here. Notice that the original information we were given was side side angle. This is the, the side side angle situation, the so called ambiguous case. It could be that there's no solution. It could be there's one solution. It could be there's two solutions uh, to solving the ambiguous case. You know there's no solutions if this ratio for sine turns out to be something bigger than one or less than negative one, because sine of b needs to be less than or equal to one. Uh, but greater than or equal to negative one. If you're outside that range, then B could not, there's no angle that could satisfy B here, and therefore there's no solution. Now, this is an important place to check. Notice our ratio does lie between negative one and one, so we can proceed forward. There is gonna be a solution to this triangle. There could still be multiple solutions. We'll see maybe that in a second, but we're gonna proceed forward here. B is gonna be approximately sine inverse of 0.3782, like so for which, again, consulting your calculator. If we want to be a little bit more precise, of course, then we really would be like, oh, the precise value for sine of B, um, excuse me, the precise value for B is gonna be sine inverse of 205 over 314 times sine of 35.4 degrees. That's the exact value, but again, we're gonna use an approximation here. On the calculator, if we round to the nearest degree, we're gonna end up with 22.2 degrees like so. In this situation, uh, that would then give us that the measurement of angle C, right? It's gonna equal 180 degrees, subtract angle A, subtract angle B. And so we end up with 180 degrees minus uh, the 22.2 we got for B. Uh, minus the 35.4 degrees we were given for A. And this would give us that C is equal to 122.4 degrees. And so with that information in mind, we can then use the law of sines to finish off finding C here, little c. So little c is gonna equal sine of big C equals, we can compare this to B, we can compare this to A as angle B here is an approximated value. Even the sine of B is approximated. We're just gonna use angle A again. So we're gonna get little a, over sine of a. Solving for little c, we get c equals uh, cap, our little a times sine of capital C over sine of capital A. Little a, remember, was 314. Sine of c, uh, we'll plug that in there, we get sine of 122.4 degrees. And then we divide that by sine of 35.4 degrees. Uh, that's supposed to be a degree symbol right there. Put all of this into our calculator as well and approximately we get 458 feet for little c. And so if we come up here and label the information we just found out here, uh, we would see that it's like, okay, uh, c would have an angle measure of 122.4 degrees. The length of c turned out to be, like we said, 458 feet. And then angle b turned out to be 
of, what was it again, 22.2 degrees like so. Now, this is, this is a very important step. The next step here is a very important step when it comes to the law of sines. It's important to remember that if you take sine of B, this is actually equal to sine of 180 degrees minus B. That is to say, the sine function cannot tell the difference between an angle and its supplement. You get the exact same sine ratio because in the first and second quadrant, sine is both positive. In particular, sine cannot tell the difference between an acute angle and an obtuse angle. So when your calculator tells you that B is equal to 22.2 degrees, it's giving you the angle in the first quadrant. That is the acute angle. What if it was an obtuse angle? Well, the obtuse angle would be 180 degrees minus 22.2 degrees. That's also a possibility um, that we have to consider. So we considered the situation where B is acute, there, that forced C to be obtuse. But what if B is the obtuse angle here? We take 180 degrees minus 22.2 degrees. We end up with 157.8 degrees. But I want you to compare 157.8 versus versus A right here. Um, and when you started to compute C here, the idea is you take 180 degrees, you subtract from it B, which in this case would be 157.8 degrees, subtract from it A, 35.4 degrees here. In that situation, you would end up with a negative value, right? Notice that you get 180 degrees. Subtract from that the combined value of B and of B and A in this situation would be 193.22. That's going to give you something less than zero. C can't have a zero. Or I can't have a negative degree measure. And so this tells you that B cannot be obtuse in this situation. Therefore, the, there's only going to be one triangle that solves this situation. And this is what happens when you try to solve the ambiguous case using the law of signs. You have to make sure you check, is the ratio acceptable? If it is, that means there's one or two solutions. If, that, if the sign ratio is too big or too small, there's no solutions. Then you continue forward, you calculate B. You have to also calculate the, or the supplement of B. Once you get past this marker right here, the acute angle for B will always work, but you have to check the obtuse angle. In this situation, the obtuse angle didn't work because it was so big that its combined value with A was over 180 degrees. There wasn't an obtuse version for angle B, but there are situations with there, where that is the case. We'll see that in a little bit. And therefore, this then demonstrates how we can get a unique solution when we solve the ambiguous case using the law of signs.